In Power Query, do you ever find yourself adding column after column after column? And the applied steps list just becomes filled with all of those steps. Well, you probably don't need all those steps. And in this video, we're looking at two ways to stop adding unnecessary steps when adding columns. So if you're ready, let's get started. The first method we're looking at avoids the add column shuffle. This is where we add a new column, we then delete an old column and then rename the new column to have the same name as the old column. Often in these scenarios, we can avoid adding any columns at all. Here in Power Query, we have our data with columns for item, value and units. And let's suggest that we want to increase each item in the value column by 20% if that value is greater than 75. To do that, we might resort to the add column shuffle. We go to add column and then click custom column. We might give this a column name of new value. And then for the formula, we might use if the value is greater than 75. If that's true, then we want the value multiplied by 1.2, else we want to return the value. When we click OK, that now adds a new column with the additional 20%. We no longer need our value column, so we can select that and press delete. And then we rename our new value to just value. And because we often want our columns to be in the same order as they were, we might even drag our value column to the left. And this is the add column shuffle. The truth is, in this scenario, we don't need to add any columns at all. We're going to head back to our added custom step. In there, we can see the code that we created inside our custom column dialog box. I'm going to select that code and press Control C to copy. We can now delete all of those previous steps. In the Applied Steps window, I'll click on the cross next to each item. Instead of adding a column, what we actually want to do is to transform a column. But when we come to the Transform ribbon, there isn't an option that gives us what we need. Therefore, we're going to apply a transformation and then change the M code to get the result. We want to transform our value column. So with that selected, we can then apply a transformation. Because this is a number column, we're going to select a transformation from the number column group. If it were a text value, we would apply it from the text column group. For this example, we're going to go into the standard option and we're going to add one to every number. I'll then click OK. This uses the table.transform columns function. We can see the name of our previous step, which is source. We can see the name of the column, which is value. We can then see that for each value in that column, we are adding one. The underscore represents each individual row. So rather than underscore plus one, we are going to paste our previously copied code. Now this references the value column, but in our code, we can see that we are already applying this to the value column. Therefore, we don't need to use value. Instead, we can replace that with the underscore. That's the first instance. We then have the second instance, and finally the third instance. When we commit that formula, we now get exactly the same result as before, but we didn't have to perform the add column shuffle. So that method avoids adding any columns. Instead, we use our knowledge of Power Query to transform the existing column. The second method we're looking at is where we want to add multiple columns at the same time. And we can actually add as many columns as we like with just two steps. Here we are back in Power Query, and we're going to look at how we can add any number of columns just using two steps. To do this, we are going to use Add Column and then Custom Column. For the column name, we're going to call this Temp. It will be replaced later, so we can call this column name anything we like. And now to create multiple columns, we are going to create a record. To do that, we start with an opening square bracket. 
and I'll then press return to create a new line. Let's suggest that the first column we want to add checks whether the item is alpha. I'm going to call my column name is alpha. And then we need an equals. And is alpha is equal to where the item equals alpha. So that will return a true or false for each row. And that value is then allocated to our is alpha value. At the end, I'll add a comma and then press return to create a new line. Let's now add another column. I'm going to call this value two. And the value that we want to allocate is if the is alpha field. So if that returns true, then we want to return the value column multiplied by, let's say a premium of 1.1. Otherwise it just returns the value. At the end, I'll enter a comma and press return to create a new line. Now let's calculate the value two per unit. I'm going to call this value two per unit. And this will be equal to our value two divided by our units. Now, because this will give us multiple decimal places, we're going to add onto this the number dot round function. And we want to round our result to two decimal places can then close the bracket on the number dot round function. Because this is the last calculation, I don't need a comma at the end, but I can press return and enter a closing square bracket. We have created a record with three items, is alpha, value two, and value two per unit. You can see we have no syntax errors, and then we can click okay. This now adds our temp column, and inside that temp column, we have a record and that record contains our three columns. So all we have to do is expand our temp column. We get to select which columns we want to include. I am going to uncheck use original column name as prefix and then click OK. And now from those two steps, we have three columns, but we could have added five, 10 or 50 columns and it would always be two steps. Therefore, this doesn't fill up our applied steps list. And that's it. That's how we can avoid adding unnecessary steps into Power Query when we add columns. If you like this video, then make sure you subscribe and get notifications so you don't miss any of our future videos. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time.